Great, good afternoon. Um, as you will have all seen, the flags of the UN are flying at half mast today in remembrance of the colleagues we lost yesterday in the air crash in Ethiopia. I know the numbers of fatalities have been uh, fluctuating and we've gone through different uh, numbers. As of five minutes ago, we have confirmation that 21 uh, UN personnel from different parts of the system died in the crash. Um, before speaking to the Commission on the status of women, the Secretary General said that this is a sad day for our organization, for many people around the world. He said the United Nations is united in grief, and he extends his deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of all the victims, to the government of people of Ethiopia, and all those affected by the disaster. He said our fallen colleagues were women and men, junior professionals and seasoned officials, hailing from all corners of the globe and with a wide array of expertise. They all had one thing in common, a spirit to serve the people of the world and to make it a better place for all. It is in the same spirit that calls us to the UN every day, he said. And as you know, many of these um, people on the plane were heading to Nairobi to attend the UN uh, Environment Assembly. And the fourth UN Environment Assembly began this morning, uh, and the Assembly is addressing the theme, Innovative Solutions for Environmental Chain Challenges and Sustainable Consumption and Production. And after I'm finished here, we'll have by phone the head of the UN uh, Environment's New York office, Satya Tripathi, who is in Nairobi, uh, and will speak to you more, more about the assembly. And a number of various UN agencies who lost staff, uh, their executive heads have sent out uh, condolences, uh, notes, and statements. And some of the agencies are also releasing the names of their um, of the victims as next of kin are notified. Um, I now have a statement on Malawi. The Secretary General is deeply saddened by the loss of life and significant damage to people's homes and livelihoods caused by heavy rains and flooding in Malawi. The Secretary General extends his condolences to the families of the victims and the government and people of the country. The UN expresses its solidarity with the Malawi authorities and stands ready to support them as they respond to the humanitarian needs resulting from heavy rains and flooding. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that since May, uh, March 8th, a total of 30 deaths, 377 injuries have been recorded. Uh, our humanitarian colleagues say that more than 93,000 households, that's close to half a million people, have been impacted, including 6,000 households have been displaced. More information online. And the same storm is also hitting uh, Mozambique, where we re where our humanitarian uh, team is reporting at least 10 deaths in displacement of some 10,500 people following heavy rains due to tropical cyclone. And the, turning to uh, the DRC, uh, the Secretary General strongly condemns the recent attacks on Ebola treatment centers in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He sends condolences to the families and friends of those killed in the attacks and stresses that uh, protecting civilians in conflict is a fundamental tenet of international humanitarian law. He emphasizes that civilians, including health workers, are not a target. Still on Ebola on Saturday, the head of the World Health Organization, Dr. Uh, Tedros, visited an Ebola treatment center in Butembo uh, that was attacked by armed groups last week and again on uh, the same day this weekend. The visit uh, came as he concluded a three-day mission to the country, during which he met with the president of the DRC, government officials, partner organization, and local responders involved in the response to Ebola. Expressing, expressing sorrow over the deaths and injuries resulting from these attacks, uh, he said, we have no choice to accept, to accept to continue serving the people here who are among the most vulnerable in the world. And at the opening of the 63rd session on the Commission of the Status of Women, the Secretary General stressed that gender equality is fundamentally a question of power and emphasized that the world today cannot make progress without women's voices, ideas, and participation in all areas of society. We need, more, uh, we need you more than ever, he told CSW participants. Uh, the Secretary General noted that advocates for gender equality are mobilizing like never before, but warned there is a pushback on women's rights around the world that is deep, pervasive, and relentless. 
He said the UN will not turn back and continue pushing for gender equality and women's empowerment. Secretary General highlighted the progress made within the UN where for the first time in history, there are more women than men in the senior management group. There's gender parity among resident coordinators and there are more women heading peace operations than ever before. The Secretary General said parity is about serving, securing peace, advancing human rights and achieving the sustainable development goals. Added, if women are excluded, everyone pays a price. And the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Mark Lowcock, is scheduled to co-chair on behalf of the Secretary General the third conference on supporting the future of Syria and the region with the European Union in Brussels on March 14th. He's expected to arrive in Brussels on March 13th on the second day of the Days of Dialogue that precedes the ministerial level conference. The recently issued 2019 Humanitarian Needs Overview for Syria is a stark reminder that the crisis is far from over. 11.7 million people in Syria who remain in need of some form of humanitarian aid and protection. During the conference, the UN and its partners will appeal for continued support and general financial pledges to the critical life-saving response inside Syria, as well as for support to the refugee response and resilience needs in neighboring countries. Meanwhile, we're gravely concerned by the continued reports of increased civilian casualties and suffering due to the intensified uh, hostilities in the northwest part of the country as four civilians were reportedly killed and 10 injured in various locations between the 8th and 10th of March. Back here, the Security Council held an open meeting on Afghanistan, addressing the Council, the Secretary General Special Representative Tadamichi Yamamoto said for the last three months have seen significant developments on both peace and elections with tangible progress meet made towards ending the conflict. He noted the UN and Taliban have continued to engage in sensitive, in sensitive talks in intensive, excuse me, in intensive talks, uh, but stressed the need for the Taliban to speak directly with the government of Afghanistan. Mr. Yamamoto stressed we must recognize that all international efforts need to come to support the Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process. He said he expects this year's presidential elections to be a critical step forward in furthering consolidating Afghanistan's representative political system and that holding them on time will be very challenging. And on Myanmar, our humanitarian colleagues are concerned about the situation in Rakhine State with conflict continuing between Myanmar authorities and the Arakan army. As a result of stepped up clashes last week, the Mrok U Township, some 3,700 people remain displaced in that area. Overall, 9,000 people have been displaced by fighting since late last year across Rakhine and Chin states. OCHA says it is working closely with partners to advocate with the government to increase access to those impacted by the fighting. And the World Health Organization today released a global influenza strategy for 2019-2030 aimed at protecting people across the world from the threat of influenza. The threat aims to prevent seasonal influenza, control its spread from animals to humans, and prepare for the next pandemic. Um, Thanks to Samoa, uh, which has paid its regular budget dues in full, we now have reached the nice number of 70 at the honor roll. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock, there will be a briefing here by UN Women and the Inter Interparliamentary Union on the launch of the map of women in politics in the context of the CSW meetings. The uh, speakers will include uh, the executive director of um, UN Women, Fuzile Mlambo Nguka, and Gabriela Cuevas Baron, the president of the Interparliamentary Union. At 12.30, there'll be a briefing uh, on the high-level event of women in power by the president of the General Assembly, Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, along with the president of Croatia, uh, the president of the Republic of Estonia, the president of Trinidad and Tobago and the Prime Minister of Iceland and I will be sandwiched in between those uh, briefings and I turn to you. Yes, Maggie. Steph, condolences on Thank your you. um, loss of your colleagues. Thank you very much. Does the Secretary General plan to go out to Nairobi perhaps for any sort of a memorial or to visit? Uh, I, I know they come from different places yeah. so maybe it's hard to centralize something, but what, what's planned? Uh, no, I, I think there are no plans, as I know, of him traveling to Nairobi. The Deputy Secretary General will be going to uh, Nairobi as previously scheduled to attend the uh, UN uh, Environment Assembly. We'll be officially announcing that with more detail uh, tomorrow. Um, and I, I think, as you rightly said, there will be memorial services, I think, 
throughout the world. Uh, different agencies will obviously hold different memorial uh, services, uh, and we'll wait to see what uh, how these things are organized and, and where. Obviously, right now, uh, the focus is on um, supporting the families of the victims uh, as best we can. Carol. Stefan, do you have a breakdown of the 21 per uh, agency? We should be having yes. that uh, shortly. We're talking to our colleagues in DSS. We're trying to get a confirmed list to you. The, the numbers uh, are, are changing, and they may yet change before the end of the day or next. Yes, or then. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, also, uh, condolences on, Thank you. on the last of your colleagues. Uh, I have a question on uh, Colombia. Uh, last night, uh, President Ivan Duque announced his objection to six paragraphs mm -hmm. of the uh, transitional justice framework uh, that was agreed with the FARC and the government of Colombia. And shortly after, uh, a group of experts and personalities sent a letter to the ESG asking for any comment mm -hmm. or reaction on what it means to the future of the peace process in Colombia. So have you been able to see the letter? The, the Secretary General received the letter uh, this morning. We'll be responding to it as soon as I have something. I will let you know. Okay. Yes, sir. Condolences on Thank you. your loss. Thank uh, you. Um, and I wonder whether you have um, information that you can disclose on the rankings of uh, the UN personnel and whether the UN is going to get involved in uh, informing the families uh, of the victims. Yes, I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the victims, the vast majority of the victims w worked for, I mean, they all worked for various UN agencies. So each agency is uh, taking care of informing the next of kin, and we'll be releasing the names publicly. I think our colleagues at the World Food Program did so earlier today. Um, nothing will be released publicly until we are triple sure that the families have been uh, notified. The concern is really on, on the families and ensuring uh, we can help them in this, uh, in this horrendous uh, time. Um, I'm not aware of any involvement by the UN into the investigation uh, of the crash. Right now, we're obviously in touch with the Ethiopian authorities. The normal protocols are being, uh, are being uh, followed. And as soon as, if we have more details we'll, to share, we will. Yes, Madam. Um, I have a question about Venezuela. Um, they have lost power uh, on Friday. They have not been able to um, reestablish the service mostly in all the states. Um, what is the impact to the operations of the United Nations as you have an office in Caracas and also to the visit of the High Commissioner of Human Rights uh, group that's supposed to be in Venezuela during this past few days is any impact to their operation as I'm, I'm not aware of any impact on the the human rights team and but you should check with our human rights colleague in uh, in Geneva obviously the loss of, of power has an impact throughout the country uh, and I think uh, can only make what is already a very serious humanitarian problem uh, more complicated and more complex um, and that, I'll leave it at that yes Carol and then Maggie Stefan, again, just to clarify on the plane crash, is how unprecedented is this for the UN? Has there been another incident where that high number of, of people died in, in a plane crash? It's, um, uh, it's obviously uh, ranks uh, up there with one of the worst uh, disasters that we've seen. Uh, obviously, the... Um, uh, what remains the highest uh, toll were the, the 102 colleagues we lost in the, um, in the earthquake uh, in Haiti. Uh, there was also a, um, I mean, there was the attack on the Canal, uh, on the canal Hotel, uh, which 23 people were killed. 17 of our colleagues uh, were murdered in Algiers uh, in 2007 on the attack, uh, on the attack there. Uh, in 2011, uh, there was a uh, plane crash, a UN peacekeeping plane crashed in the DRC uh, with about 32 uh, people on board, which was a mix of UN staffers and NGOs uh, and contractors as well. This ranks uh, extremely high in a, in a very unfortunate uh, ranking. Yes, Maggie. 
Uh, just following up on Ali's question, would the UN's International Civil Aviation uh, Authority get involved in this? Uh, I think there, there are there are very set uh, protocols on on investigating air crash. There's uh, the National uh, Safety Organization of the uh, of where the crash happened. Obviously, uh, the plane maker uh, is involved. I will check with uh, ICAO, but um, I'm not aware that they've received any request. Uh, to be involved in this investigation, but we will check with them. Sorry. Uh, not necessarily a request. Wouldn't the, would the UN ask to be involved since so many? I think of their staff we we will uh, at this point. Let, we're we're in touch with the Ethiopian uh, authorities, and we'll obviously be monitoring very closely uh, this investigation. Thank you all.